With 33 days of campaigning behind them, party leaders are now in their final sprints. They have just one week to convince voters their plan is the best one for Canada. Between tax cuts and health care enhancements and breaks for homeowners, the candidates are all making some big and potentially costly promises. So how would they pay for them all? This week we're asking. Over the next few days we'll be hearing from four different parties to discuss their fiscal plans. Today we begin with the Green Party. Jean-Luc Cook is the Green Party's president and a candidate in Ontario here for Nepean. He joins me in studio. Hi, Mr. Cook. Nice to see you again. Thanks nice for coming you. on the show. I appreciate it. Uh, I want to dig into some of the assumptions your party is making as far as revenue is concerned first. And I'll start off by uh, looking at a 0.5% tax uh, that you're pledging to make on all financial transactions in Canada. The PBO estimated that, that it had a high degree of uncertainty because it depends on what the reaction of the financial markets are or the, the state of the financial markets and that it could be off by factors of two or three in mm -hmm. either direction. Is it too big of an assumption to be banking on then, or unrealistic of an assumption? No, I, I think it's very realistic. So the, the financial transaction tax has been, um, I've heard some comments at the door saying, well, you're going to tax me for cashing a checks. Well, no, it's, it's not about people cashing checks or paying bills. This is about uh, high-frequency tran uh, transactions, high-frequency trades on the stock market, the money markets, um, uh, derivatives and options. Um, the, the, the previous name for this was called the Tobin tax. So it's, the idea is, is you don't want to have um, a zero cost for speculative transactions, and so you want to apply a cost to that. And the reason for that variability is because will the markets just clamp down on all, on all high-frequency transactions, or will they just attenuate them? Or will they not react at all? And really, there hasn't been a major market um, that that is really taken on to that step. So that's why there's the high degree of uncertainty. At least that's my assumption. Yeah, the, what the PBO says is basically the, re the reaction of the financial markets is uncertain. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, it, it's, it's, I mean, if it, if it were just a small amount of the budget, okay, but it's, it's, you're banking on it bringing in as much as $18 billion a year. So if that's cut mm -hmm. in half or a third, uh, you know, by a factor of two or three, as the PBO highlights, that will make a substantial, substantial difference to the bottom line, according to the Green Party, like according to what you're projecting. Right, and, and in, in a previous life of mine, I've, I've done some, um, some mathematical modeling of like options pricing and stuff like that. So th the real purpose of a market is to facilitate price discovery, um, and perhaps 100 transactions a second isn't necessary for, for one trader to facilitate that. Maybe it's only 50, maybe it's only 20. Um, we're going to see how the market be reacts to it. What if, what if it causes a, a slowdown within the markets? What if it negatively affects the financial markets? Well, Are you worried it, uh, about uh, the impact on the overall economy? Well, ultimately, I don't think it will, uh, because if there's a price discrepancy from Toronto versus the New York Stock Exchange on, let's pick something like BlackBerry, um, there's still going to be a, uh, an opportunity for arbitrage to close that gap. Mm -hmm. So there's still going to be money to be made. It's just there, there won't be as much money to be made on those split-second discrepancies um, that, that a lot of the high-frequency traders are. So the former parliamentary budget officer, Kevin Page, has a group at the University of Ottawa that looks at all the di different costings, mm -hmm. and your, your party resubmitted a, pl a costed platform. And on one item, that is the... Uh, responsible fiscal management gave your party a fail. And I just want to read it specifically what it highlighted. There was a double counting of savings in the revenue raising measures, bank taxation and corporate tax increases that would undermine your balanced budget objective. So I just want to be clear because the two that they're highlighting is essentially you're going to raise the federal portion of the corporate tax rate and then mm -hmm. you're also going to uh, charge regular commercial tax on commercial bank profits. Are those two separate things? My, my understanding is that, is that they are separate so perhaps that is a discrepancy in our plan and it's... Um, as we discussed earlier before the, the cameras started taping, is our plan is uh, is in such level of detail that we've literally given people enough rope to, to go, come around and hang us on it. Um, and that's fine. I think that's the level of transparency all the parties really need to have. But, uh, but yeah, so there, if... If we are going to raise the, the corporate tax rate, um, again, we're focusing on large business, not the small business tax rate. We're trying to keep that yeah, exactly the that. way it is. Um, th then I think there is a, th there is, I think Kevin Page did um, describe that properly, that we probably counted it twice on both ends. Yeah. I'm, I'm not entirely certain if it's going to be uh, entirely a structural problem. Um, if you look at the five-year plan for our, for our budget, it will bring it down back to balanced budgets on, on year five. So, and, so and that's, I mean, that's, that's essentially why I'm questioning the revenue assumptions. You're right to make the point that this is, uh, and I've been looking through all the platforms as far as the costing goes, it is the more detailed, mm -hmm. the most detailed, but you do have, you know, revenue banked in, and the revenue is a key assumption that your party is making in order to fulfill that promise of balancing the books. You have it baked in twice. One, you know, you're going to tax, you're going to raise the corporate tax rate on, on those banks, and you're also going to charge them a second tax. And I'm just wa I just want to be clear, is it, your, is it your understanding that both of those will happen? So, m m I think the addition, um, we, we, we may have double counted on, on that uh, one line addition. 
Um, but I, I don't think it's going to materially break apart the entire plan. I think, I think it does present an area that we need to, to, to revise and look at again. Um, and, and we welcome that kind of criticism. Another revenue assumption is recouping, and this is one that all parties make, uh, mm -hmm. recouping money from tax havens. Uh, and, and I don't see baked into here a line for increasing the funding for the CRA to do so. How much would a Green Party government spend in order to recoup the money that you plan to recoup? So th th I think that's a great question. I think the CRA has been um, underactive in its mandate to actually pursue a lot of the people who do uh, tax avoidance measures that are beyond legal. Um, and I think, uh, I think some increased funding in there could be justified. I'm not entirely certain if, um, if just throwing money at the problem is going to address it. I think uh, a lot of the time it's, uh, a lot of the investigations that I've heard from, from, from small businesses and folks at the door is that CRA spends time investigating them and at the end they end up having to pay an extra $500 in taxes. Meanwhile, they know other people who have significantly uh, larger amounts that, that could be recovered and they aren't being pursued because CRA is, de is determined that the cost pursuing them is too much. So I, I think if, if we refocus that, uh, going after the larger money, perhaps it is uh, more resource intensive, but you won't have to cast as many times because there are fewer of them that are doing it. It is something that the, that the current government, the Liberals, promised to do as well. And in fact, they allotted in the budget over 10 years $1 billion, and they say that would bring in $10 billion. Like that's mm. the estimate that they've attached to just bringing in that much money. So it's not, again, it's not chump change that I'm asking about. It's you know how much is the Green Party willing to spend in order to recoup what you say is going to be $6 billion a year. Again, a big, a yep. big amount of revenue that you're banking on with it, no it, specific it's, it's plan. It's reallocating, right? So, so the Liberals' plan was to you know keep keep chasing the small the small fish, and then here's the billion dollars to go after the larger fish. We say we need to reallocate that. Um, it's more worthwhile to go after the larger fish and actually demonstrate uh, again in game theory, right? Because because that, that that's how people who have large net worths operate. Game theory is like, okay, what is the probability of me fighting CRA and them giving up? Oh, in in today's regimen, uh, that probability is probably north of eighty percent. If we reallocate resources to actually follow through on these big fish and chasing them, um, do you have any evidence that will work? Right, they, they're hidden tax havens, not by you know innocent people, by people who know how to game the tax system or to, mm -hmm. to work within the rules, but to hide hide their money in in offshore tax havens. These are n these are not easy fish to catch. Right, uh, it's, CRA is not. Uh, they, they, aren't, they aren't lambs in the, in, in the field here. They, we, we have people in CRA who are, who are aware of what a lot of these systems are, and they're being told, don't chase them, it's going to be too expensive. Don't chase them, we don't want to spend that much money. Uh, if we reallocate the resources and the funds to actually go after chasing them, I think, I, I think that, that that is the right way to go. I have a quick final question, and that is that you, you have made that central promise to balance the budget within five years. Mm -hmm. But Elizabeth May, Ms. May, your party's leader, has noted that if, if economic circumstances were to change, that that projection would change as well. That promise would alter as well. Well, what economic circumstances would necessitate breaking that promise? Um, the, the big one I think a lot of folks are, are looking at is a sudden uh, drop in housing prices, uh, increase in mortgage delinquencies, um, sudden increased interest rates. Um, let's say the U.S.-China trade war really starts turning nasty. Um, you, you, you can start going down uh, really dark paths. But, but ultimately, I think every budget and every leader needs to say, our budget is presented here under certain assumptions, and if those assumptions break, we need to not be uh, religious to our platform, but to actually react to And I situations. understand that point. I think what, what, we, what we've seen is even when the economy isn't very altered and, or mm -hmm. the, the circumstances have not changed that much, the promise ends up being broken. So I'm wondering, is there any way for Canadians to hold your party to account any quantifiable measure? For example, does there have to be two quarters where the economy contracts and a recession is imminent? Or is it just the sort of possibility of more trade uncertainty with China and Canada or China and the U.S.? Because that, uh, that would cover qu quite a large swath of ground, right? That would almost right. give you a carte blanche to say, sorry, we're not going to balance the books anymore. Um, it, the reality is that the, the biggest uncertainty with any party's budgets right now going into the election is what is the configuration of parliament? Um, if it is a configuration of bloc conservative or green NDP liberal or uh, who knows, conservative NDP green, um, th these configurations we've never seen before um, and that balance of how many seats go, go where and, and, and uh, in what number and what quantity and what kind of MPs go there will really dictate, I think, what the, what the budgets will look like and what the economic uh, direction of the country will be. Is that sort of an easy way of saying, we're, you know, we're not, we're not going to stick to this promise or? Well, we... I, t I, 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 I get I what you're you. saying. We, we, we as a party really realize the value of trying to be um, not a moving target. 
Uh, the Liberals have been classic, uh, the party of being the moving target, moving with the polls, which is which has usually served you well when you're trying to chase the polls. Uh, the Green have been a, a constant as as much as we can. We're telling us, we're, we're telling everyone, these are the red lines that that we need to address in this election and in the next 10 years. Otherwise, the planet's in trouble. So we've telegraphed where what our red lines are and what things we're prepared to compromise on, what, what things we're prepared not to. Um, and the, is the budget one of those things? Is is balancing the books in five years something you're willing I, I, I think, to compromise? I think certain spending items are definitely uh, negotiable, um, but the pipeline obviously isn't. Uh, continued action on climate change isn't. Stopping burning stuff so for us to get around. Stopping burning stuff to make electricity. These are things that we need to attack head on because they are the highest interest rate uh, expense items on the budget. Um, our, our first year's budget, yes, it has a high um, a high spend rate on that first year, but that's because it represents 20 years of failed investment in our green economy and we're trying to play catch up and we're saying in five years we can reach that but we have to turn around we have to turn around pretty fast that first year is going to be expensive okay i'll leave it there thank you mr cook i appreciate your time today thanks a lot hi i'm vashi capello's host of power in politics see more of our show by subscribing to the cbc news channel or click the link for another video